Hello, welcome to the SMU Video Archive Series. In the series, we interview members of the SMU community who can provide insight into the history of SMU, especially from the perspective of their time at the university. I'm Jim Early, and with us today is Joe Tyson, Professor Emeritus of Religious Studies. Joe, when did you come here? Was it in the early 60s or late 50s? It was the late 50s, Jim. I came in uh, 1958. Oh. Uh, it doesn't seem like yeah. that long no. ago, actually, but uh, it, now that I count it, yeah. it was yeah. 1958. And your educational experience was, was Duke plus Union Theological yeah. Seminary, so it came from New York in a sense. I did, yes. Uh, I did actually after I had finished most of my work mm -hmm. at uh, Union in New York, I moved to North Carolina for about mm -hmm. a year and a half where I served some churches uh, in mm -hmm. the Piedmont area mm -hmm. of North Carolina. I had, uh, I had three churches for about an 18 month period. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, had always wanted to, to yeah. do some teaching, so I got a message from Ward Reedus, who was then the yeah. chair of, the, chair department. of the, the department, it was called Department of Religion yeah. Yeah. At, that, at that time, and he wanted me to come out for an interview, which I did, yeah. and, uh, and, and, and we hit it off uh, yeah. pretty well. Uh, I came to fill in for um, Al Sundberg, I think it was, who was uh, to be on leave for yeah. one year. So and you took a flyer on a one-year deal. On a one-year deal, and it turned into a 40-year yeah. stint. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure why. They must, the, the dean just didn't look around yeah. to see, I guess, well, I, <laughs> how long I'd been here, how long yeah. I'd extended my stay. But it, it worked out very well. I was here for 40 years uh, teaching. What was your sense of the place in the department when you first arrived? I can say more about that as I look back on it. I expect when I when I first came, I was I was terribly impressed uh, with, uh, with 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 SMU, with the department, with uh, with the college, uh, with the university as a, as a whole. Um, but clearly, as I look back on it, uh, I recognize now that this um, our department, uh, Department of Religion was uh, really very much like an, a college uh, uh, department of mostly Bible study. Uh, it was critical Bible study. This was by no means any kind of effort to indoctrinate students into any particular religious way of life, any particular theology, or any particular way of thinking. By no means. but. Uh, but it was confined to that. The curriculum was confined. And this to was that. almost all the students took it. Almost all the students took uh, courses mm -hmm. in old, what we called Old Testament and New Testament. Um, a six-hour uh, requirement that they had in they could fulfill that requirement in either religion mm -hmm. or philosophy. And uh, my sense was that about ninety percent of the students chose religion. I don't know why. They must have thought it was easier. Um, they might have found it more attractive. I don't know yeah. which uh, w would be the case there, but we did get most mm -hmm. of the students. So we had uh, we had full classes almost all the mm -hmm. time. Then, of course, our uh, full load, as you well know, right. was uh, was a four course four course load in the and, and at, not at, at a that time. few students per class and so not a few. I, I expect we had well over a hundred. Uh, mm -hmm total number of students in all of our, on, in all four classes. Mm -hmm. I say four. Mm -hmm. In actual fact, those first few years that I taught, um, I generally did an overload, which was a fifth course. Um, we received 10 percent extra pay for that. <coughs> and, uh, I needed it. Most of us did in those days. Uh, the pay was uh, rather paltry. And uh, so we, we did that. I did some of mine at Dallas College. Um, I don't recall whether that was um, still operative downtown. We still downtown. had a building downtown. Did I you, remember teaching there at least Did you teach some there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I, I did so on several yeah. occasions. It was near the First Baptist Church yeah. on Hervé, yeah. uh, Hervé and Ross, I think, right. uh, is where it was. And I, I taught several courses down there. The students were probably a little bit better motivated than most of yes. our students that we had on campus because they were older, 
Yeah. Uh, some of them were supported by their companies. Yeah. TI, for example, mm -hmm. um, uh, paid the tuition for m many students mm -hmm. to come. Were the courses that you taught there pretty much the same courses? They were the same courses, courses. yes. Um, I don't recall yeah. that there were any, any, any difference at all. Did we, the same I guess we awarded degrees, didn't we, to people who... Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure we did, yeah. actually. I think it, was, it would be rare yeah. um, because uh, generally uh, students who came to uh, you know, yeah. Dallas College would take um, no more than two courses yeah. uh, a semester. So it would take them a very long time to uh, finish yeah. up if they started just right out of high school. <laughs> but but I, 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 my sense is that yeah. there were some who did, yeah. some who did uh, finish. Yeah. So that was not a bad experience, mm -hmm. though you worked hard. Yeah. You worked hard at that, uh, that kind of teaching. A lot of papers to grade and uh, well, pay and wasn't so any too good as that. The pay was not, not all that good, but it helped yeah. make, uh, make, make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Um, my, my real sense, Jim, <laughs> of um, the department is, is one of, of real change in the time that I was associated with it. Size is about the same, uh, interestingly mm -hmm. enough. I, I've forgotten the numbers yeah. that we had then. Uh, I think the department is seven now. It may have been eight yeah. or, or, or so then, not, not very different. Yeah. Uh, but the makeup of it is so very different. As I said, the um, uh, real focus mm -hmm. at, uh, in 58 mm -hmm. and for several years after that was on uh, bi mm -hmm. biblical studies. Yeah. And I think done very well. I, mm -hmm. I think most, uh, most of the people who taught in those uh, courses did them, did them quite well. But uh, as time went on, we've, we've tri we tried to make a number of changes mm -hmm. so that we could expand mm -hmm. The, um, the interests and the focuses of the department. This has been general, quite frankly, um, in, a, in American, yeah. yes, in American education. During the 60s in particular, there was a real growth of religious studies department. Changing the name from religion to religious studies. Doing that studies. And, uh, and changing the conception from uh, one that focused uh, on biblical studies or theology mm -hmm. To, to one that really was concerned about a variety of different religious traditions. Um, that's the distinction, really, between religious studies and theology, in my, in my judgment, that uh, religious studies gives, a uh, department of religious studies, gives a faculty an opportunity to look at uh, world religions in a, in religions a way that you... different cultures. And yeah, exactly right, and diff different cultures, different histories, yeah. and... Uh, certainly different peoples um, all, along with it. So I recall um, when I first I, I became chair for the first time, I had two terms as chair, as you may remember, uh, but my first term started in 1965, and one of the first appointments we made was uh, an appointment in Buddhist, mm -hmm. Buddhist studies. Uh, Fred Strang, of, of blessed memory, yeah. Um, died and that was a joint young. appointment with Perkins? It was a joint appointment with Perkins, it was indeed. And then very soon after that we made an appointment in Islam and uh, on down the road, one in Jewish studies uh, uh, and, 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 and so forth. These things yeah. have come and gone yeah. to some extent, but uh, if you look at the department now, it, uh, we have some genuine expertise in Christianity, in Judaism, uh, Islam, mm -hmm. um, and Buddhism, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, adequate competence in, in Hinduism as well. Um, I think we have no expert in that particular yeah. area, but uh, that will come, I think, mm -hmm. as, as, as time goes on. So I, I take some pride in, in, in the fact that we've been able over the years to build a department that uh, is, is quite outstanding in, in, a number of, uh, in a number of those, those areas. Mm -hmm. And, and I think doing very well. And it includes now, I'm happy to say, a, a chair in Jewish studies. So you have a well-funded position. Well-funded um, chair there. Uh, Nate and Anne Levine uh, gave mm -hmm. this a few years ago, and uh, it's named for them, so mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're, we're happy to have that position. How do you go about recruiting someone for a position like that? It was very difficult, quite frankly. This, uh, uh, there was a committee appointed by the provost uh, mm -hmm. to fill that position. It, uh, uh, 
and and it was a very interesting committee because mm -hmm. in that sense it had the donor uh, and his wife as members of the mm -hmm. uh, of the committee. I think that's unusual in academic circles to do that. And uh, some people from the community, a couple of rabbis were, were on that, uh, all with voting rights. Mm -hmm. um, never really came to voting, yeah, I don't yeah. think, but, um, but, but they, they would have the right to, to, to that if it happened. We first started off uh, looking for uh, a person of senior status mm -hmm. because I think we had the money for it. Yeah. I think we uh, uh, could have paid them yeah. what was yeah. needed for that, and we looked at uh, a large number of, uh, mm -hmm. of, of people mm -hmm. in all over the country, mm -hmm. and some in Israel too, as I recall, uh, who would be well known mm -hmm. and uh, could, could do an excellent job <laughs> for us. It turned out that <coughs> uh, these were just not attracted yeah. to our situation. Uh, and it's not, I think, Jim, that they had anything against uh, our university, uh, they didn't think uh, uh, they, they did think yeah. that we would be able to treat them adequately, yeah. but they're very happy where they were. Yeah. I mean, these are these are people um, at least in their fifties, yeah. uh, with families uh, well, and well rooted and, yeah. and uh, cared for well yeah, yeah. where they yeah. were at, at, the, at the Yales and the Harvards yeah. and the, and yeah. the Princetons and so forth. So uh, we, uh, we 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 felt we were not making much headway in, yeah. in doing it that way, and decided that we would go for uh, we we would try to find. Yeah a very, very excellent junior faculty person who had great promise. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and fortunately we did. Uh, Serge Froloff, who occupies yeah. that chair now, uh, has two PhDs, and I find that very unusual. I don't know many people. What, what, are, the, what are they in? Yeah, the first PhD in, in, in modern history um, from the University of Leningrad. He was born in the Soviet Union. He grew up mm. as, a, as, a, as a Soviet Jew. In, in the Soviet Union, and went to the University of Leningrad uh, and earned this PhD in modern mm -hmm. history. Then after the fall of, uh, of, of communism, mm -hmm. I'm not sure I have my yeah. chronology quite right here, but somewhere mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. uh, 91 or so, mm -hmm. he came, uh, he migrated to Israel yeah. Yeah. and uh, spent several years there um, and began to uh, uh, build up a, a great interest in the Jewish heritage, particularly in Hebrew Bible. Yeah. And uh, so he then <coughs> came to the United States, came to California, and obtained a PhD from Claremont uh, in, in Hebrew yeah. Bible, mm -hmm. which he, I believe he received about a year ago now. So yeah. that's yeah. Uh, modern, modern history and modern European history and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and Hebrew Bible. Uh, so he's, he's clearly well equipped yeah. with the languages and uh, mm -hmm. everything else that you need for that. How does the enrollment figure out from these well, rather diverse sorts yeah. of courses? And, uh, um, my understanding is that it is now very good, and it has been for the last several years. Um, very clearly, when I first came, as I said, we had yeah. uh, we had these required courses and uh, we had hundreds of students. Well, as uh, I wondered, you know, what was the immediate audience for Fred String and Buddhism? Well, uh, it does. It, <laughs> I have to say, it varies, yeah. and um, uh, Fred's courses, I think, were never never heavily subscribed. But uh, it's my understanding now yeah. that the courses in Jewish studies yeah. and Buddhist studies and Islam. Are, 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 are well subscribed no, no. and, and uh, the numbers of students are, 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 are very good. Uh, I suppose it's no surprise that um, there's a great upswing in interest in Islamic well, studies. I, rather now, than of it yeah. used to be Russia, now it's Right, Islam. that's that's the thing. And uh, John Lamoureux, who does teach in that area, has, uh, does, it, yeah. uh, does it quite well and attracts a large number no. of students. I think the number of majors in the department is, is much higher now than it has been in my memory. Uh, we limped along with seven, eight, nine, maybe a dozen one year. Uh, they have something like 35 or so now. That's and um, Very impressive. From the Department of English, uh, your perspective probably doesn't sound like a great deal, but... Uh, well, I don't know that they're much more than twice that number. Yeah, well, but, but, but it's, it's pretty big for us, yeah. uh, I, I, I think. Yeah. One thing we might touch on, Joe, is we brushed across it with Fred String, the sense of relations with Perkins, joint appointments or lack of joint appointments, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. 
the whole sense of having a Methodist theological school at one end of the campus and the Department of Religious Studies at the other in, end. in the college. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think there's been some very good things and maybe some not so good things that, that go along with that. Um, the good side of that from my perspective is that I was able to, uh, to meet uh, some, some truly excellent people in the School of Theology. Um, uh, when I first came, I had the sense that that was probably, academically speaking, the best school on campus, the, the Perkins School of Theology. Um, the, the, the deans um, that I knew from those early days were deans who really wanted to build up uh, an academic institution of, of uh, the first priority, it seems to me. Merriman and Cunningham was Merriman dean. Merriman Cunningham was dean when I first yeah. came. And then shortly after that, Joe, uh, Quillian. Quillian. <laughs> Joe Quillian became dean and uh, I think uh, carried on that legacy, yeah. uh, that legacy very well. Uh, I sense that there's a different focus uh, for the School of Theology now. Um, whether that's good or bad is not for me yeah. to say, but it's, uh, it is a different yeah. focus and, and uh, though clearly there are some very strong scholars yeah. on the faculty uh, at Perkins School of Theology, it seems to be um, that, that uh, th there's a there's an interest in building up uh, st a student body who will serve the church. Not that that was ever absent, I think, no, in the early days, no. but I think probably that there might have been a little tension between the, yeah, what the yeah. church wanted and what the yeah faculty yeah. wanted in terms of scholarship and that sort of. Thing. I think so. Uh, you know that that probably is always the case with a, with a school of theology and whatever mm -hmm. tradition uh, uh, one is in. Um, one of the areas that we have been able to cooperate on uh, has, has been the graduate program in religious studies. Uh, you know, we do give a PhD in, in religious studies, which is in Dedman College. Um, uh, maybe only nominally, but yeah. it is there. Yeah. In, 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 in Often directed by a Perkins faculty member. Absolutely, yeah. uh, absolutely. There's a funding quirk in that, yeah. I think, that uh, uh, re requires that. But at the, at the same time, no matter what you say, mm -hmm. Uh, uh, we could not give a Ph.D. in religious studies without, like without the, the cooperation of the Perkins School of Theology because the great strength no, is no. there and has been for a long time for that. But w we've cooperated very well, mm -hmm. it seems to me, in that, uh, in that program mm -hmm. and, uh, and, uh, and the future looks good. We've trained some, some, off, some excellent students in that, mm -hmm. in the, in that area, uh, had the privilege of directing some dissertations and mm -hmm. uh, enjoyed doing that very much. Mm -hmm. uh, so th I think that was a real, real success story. Mm -hmm. And as I say, the kinds of both formal and informal relationships I had with uh, mm -hmm. other persons um, from there. Yeah. My, my field is basically New Testament mm -hmm. studies. So um, Bill Farmer and I were good colleagues mm -hmm. for a long time, Victor Furnish uh, as well. So I think, uh, and now Juet Bassler. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so that you at least had a larger community of people interested. In Indeed, that. right, and that's that's one of the beauties of being at a, a university yeah. with a school of theology. It seems to me there. Well, maybe we might shift to your your general sense of uh, the university, and uh, less specifically uh, the, mm -hmm. the Department of Religious Studies. Uh, your sense of perhaps the university as it was and uh, as it's evolved uh, well, for years is a pretty good stretch of an institution's history. I know it is. Uh, at the same time, I think that uh, I'm not untypical in, in looking at the university through the prism yeah. of the department. Yeah. I, 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 no. You know, that's yeah. where I had my location. Right. That's where my residence is, where I did my teaching, and 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 and, and so forth. Um, so I, I did see it that way. But in a sense, I don't think this is misleading because I believe that uh, something of the history of the department it's uh, went in tandem with shifting you know, breadth uh, and uh, I think so focus, uh -huh. foci. Maybe yeah. so, yeah. Um, but but it, to. 
to address the university in, in toto uh -huh. may be very difficult to do, but I have the sense that this is a university that really has for a long time wanted to become a research university, but wanted to do that without losing its interest in the teaching component. Uh, now that's, uh, that's, as you know, a very, a very difficult thing to do. Keep a focus on undergraduate education yet at the same time. Uh, right. Serious. For, for a number of reasons, for a number of reasons. Uh, what undergraduates are interested in is, is pretty sometimes far distant from what you want to do in your research. Um, and your research takes time, concentration, effort, uh, uh, extended periods of time sometimes, um, which may exclude the students. But um, I know there are exceptions to this, and I know we're not even by any means uh, on it, but I, I, I have always had the sense that some of the best faculty here have been people who have their doors open to students almost all the time maybe far more than they need to have it open, but, but uh, nevertheless, this, I think the students can find faculty accessible, at least in Dedman. I don't yes. know that much about the other colleges, but uh, it seems to be that in Dedman that, that, that this has been the case, and that there are persons who, who want to do a good job of, of teaching. The Institute of Teaching Excellence is, uh, is a good sign, I think, that we, we put some effort in that and want to give a lot of attention to it. Whether we will ever really become a research university or not is, uh, I don't know. Uh, I remember Al Outler uh, from the School of Theology used to use the uh, metaphor that SMU is a, is, is a plane on the runway always on the runway, runway, attempting to take off, but never quite succeeding yeah. in doing so. And uh, uh, some of us have the feeling, I think, that that may still be the case, but I have to say that in, in the 40 years that I was here, uh, that I, that I uh, taught at SMU, I still think I'm here, mm -hmm. yeah. we'll go back on that, but uh, in the 40 years that I was teaching at SMU, I felt that there was a kind of a, a, a real improvement in the faculty quality. They brought in, uh, people in English, people in history, uh, and, and, and made of those departments something really great, and so say some things along, uh, along with our department uh, as well. Um, it, I, I mentioned that I, I can see these things better through looking at yeah. it from the from the de yeah. point of view of the of the department, and. Uh, well, One I'm of the things of people like Schubert Ogden going back to Chicago and then coming and then back coming here. back here yeah. was a, that's an interesting phenomenon. Or yeah. David Weber turning down a job at Yale. And mm -hmm. I mean, this may not be uniform across the faculty, but that suggests some, some good some success. Real strengths. Some good success stories in in, in that regard. Uh, I think it was 1965, Jim, when we first devised in the department a, a program of research leaves, and to my knowledge, you might know this better than I because your experience in the dean's office, but um, to my knowledge, that was the first um, such program I think of, that of may leaves. have been the start of it. Was it? And I think we piggybacked on it in oh. the school and made it general in the school, and nobody mm -hmm. overruled us in the sense Right, of we, got away, we yeah, got away with it. Yeah, we got away with it. Well, yeah. our, our idea originally was a very modest yeah. one, that uh, we would try to get people mm -hmm. off for a semester, mm -hmm. And then the rest of us would absorb those yeah. students so that nobody would be losing in it. Everybody would work, yeah. you know, have a few more papers yeah. to grade, but in the long run, they, yeah. would, they would get a leave. And, uh, and the adoption of some, something, a yeah. program something like that expanded to the school was, uh, it seems to me, a real boon uh, for all of us. And who it were should work in, in recruiting faculty because this compares very favorably to many state systems. I think it does, yeah. I was able to have, in the 40 years that I taught, I had seven. Uh, such research leaves each a semester long, but still yeah. that's uh, the, the spread out over yeah. a period of time, and, and uh, that was very helpful to me in getting getting the kind of work done yeah. that I wanted to do. So I found that very very helpful. Well, uh, you also spent a brief time in the dean's office and uh, and the faculty senate a couple of times. And, mm -hmm. uh, I was assistant dean um, for our, our college 
we've had a number of names, of course, and uh, I think we were called Arts and Sciences, A&S. Yes, until Art School, I guess, was established. It probably I think that's right, and then we became Humanities and Sciences. Sciences but to at avoid any rate, the parent conflict. It was only a change in name, and yeah, we were yeah. the same, same institution. Yes, I was assistant dean, uh, Joe Harris uh, from biology. Very early in your career you were well, It was 1963 and 64, 1963, 64. Uh, I can remember the dates because it, uh, 63 was the was date it? of Kennedy's yeah. assassination, which we all remember. You always remember where you were and what you were doing at the time. So I was there. My main job at that time was to monitor student progress. Uh, I say progress, I, I guess the ones that I had to look at hardest were those who did not make progress and who were not making the kinds of grades that, they, uh, that we wanted them to make. So my job was to warn them when they were getting yeah. close to being on probation or on probation yeah. or close to being uh, dropped yeah. because of poor grades and so forth. And there is always, I guess, there are always a lot of those. Yeah. Um, in that regard, but that was that was my yeah. major job. Uh, um, I did it for one year. Yeah, yeah. I was on the Senate. Um, I think I had two or three terms on the Senate at, diff at different times. Uh, weren't you president of the Senate? I was uh, sixty-seven and sixty-eight. Mm -hmm. I, I was president of the Senate. I was early in my stint. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's still early in mine, as yeah, a matter yeah. of fact, when you think about it. Yeah. Uh, and, and, uh, I remember uh, uh, some sit-ins and so forth at that time, not very clearly. I can't remember them very clearly. I, if you asked me who was involved in it, I couldn't, I couldn't tell you, I think. But there, there were some things like that that the administration was really rather bothered about and they uh, asked us to see what we could do about it uh, in the Senate. There wasn't much, I think, that we wanted to do about it, uh, as a matter of fact. but. Uh, that was uh, an interesting e experience. Uh, I served a year as faculty athletic representative too in eighty in the early eighties. I, this what I did. That. This was the representative to the conference. To the conference, it was then the Southwest Conference, yeah. uh, and to the NCAA. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, that job too. Come to think of it, was amazingly like the assistant dean's job because I had to monitor the oh. progress of the student athletes to make sure they were yeah. taking the number of hours they were required like to take and passing their certain courses grade and so point forth. Average. Certain grade point average that they had to had to make and just it's kind of a rules enforcement uh, deal. But that was only one year too. I guess you'd have to say I tried some yeah, things yeah. that I didn't want to stick with no. and I didn't think were particularly my cup of tea. I was department chair for a long time. Um, what years we? Um, I have those. Uh, Sixty-five to seventy-five, and so then again full from ten-year stretch. The ten-year stretch there, and then again from eighty-six to ninety-three. Mm -hmm. So that that totaled up to uh, seventeen years total. About ten years off, and you were <laughs> right and back in, mm -hmm. and and uh, something rather interesting that Lonnie Cleaver and I have discovered mm -hmm. that. Uh, if you put our tenure as chair together, it totals 34 years. We each had 17 yeah. years. Uh, I had it, then he came in, then mm -hmm. I had it again, mm -hmm. then he came in yeah. again until I think 99. So for a 34 year stint there, we had real stability yeah. Yeah. in the, the, the chair's yeah. office at least. And, that's, uh, uh, and a period of very substantial change, and I think yeah. in the whole improvement. It really was. It really was. I think uh, so. I, I think uh, that's something worth being, you yeah. know, being being proud of. Yeah. 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 Do you remember any particular uh, recruitment efforts in those years, uh, other than the fellow for the Jewish position? Well, uh, we had um, uh, we had an earlier. Um, position in Jewish studies, but not a chair. Yeah. In 1988, uh, we brought in Susanna Heschel, uh, who taught in, in Jewish studies. It was her first teaching job, mm -hmm. and uh, I thought it was a real coup mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to get her here, and I think she did an outstanding job of, uh, uh, in her yeah. teaching. She was very dedicated to teaching and, mm -hmm. and, um, and her research as well. 
uh, and since she's gone on to, to, to great things. She's at Dartmouth now in and, and teaching there, mm -hmm. so I thought that. Daughter of a very famous father. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, she, she lectures all over mm -hmm. the, the, the world. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and and I, th I think has, has an interesting career for that reason. Yeah. Um, Were you responsible for bringing Lonnie here? How did I was responsible for bringing Lonnie. Yes, I was. I hadn't uh, hadn't put that together until you mentioned it. But yes, um, we were in '75 when I, as you say, had been chair for ten years and thought everybody thought that was long enough. I think everybody thought so. I did, and uh, so we went out to recruit. Uh, so Lonnie was recruit recruited that. as a, as. A Central chair or actual chair? As, as the actual chair. Um, that was, yeah, we, we recruited him for his position, for what he could do in, in terms of his research and teaching, but also yeah. the, the, yeah. For, the, for the chair. Where, where was Lonnie at the time? He was at uh, Windsor in Ontario. Oh. You, um, well, I think that, that yeah that that he, and he had been there for some years. He also earlier than that had been at Trinity. Uh, I, I can't recall yeah. the, uh, what years, but he taught at Trinity for a while. He taught at UTEP, uh, University mm -hmm. of Texas yeah. El Paso, for uh, for some time prior to that as well. Uh, Duke PhD. Yeah. Uh, uh, how did you have to, How did you happen to go to Union rather than? Rather than uh, stay Duke. on at Duke for another degree, One. I believe that when I when I did go to Union, yeah. I, I started there in '53. Um, I felt that it was the most outstanding place to go for any kind of um, biblical studies, theology, or anything of that sort yeah. um, available at that yeah. time. And uh, I don't think that was wrong. I, I really think no. that they had, uh, for what I wanted, they had a better faculty than Duke did yeah. at that time. Yeah. Um, I, I think that was the yeah, case. I had a or, or another way to put it would be that uh, I had pretty, pretty well uh, exhausted yeah. what well, I could get yeah. from the Duke faculty yeah. Yeah. And, and felt that it was better to go yeah. on to Union. I'm very glad I did. I mean, this uh, Union was, um, <laughs> had some outstanding persons yeah. there at, at that time. Ron Holniebert was still yeah, teaching, still and I had yeah. some courses with him. Though I was in biblical studies, he yeah. was in ethics. Yeah. Um, I did. I was able to take some yeah. courses with him, which I treasured. Mm -hmm. The notes I still have. Yeah. I, I like what I what I learned with him. And Paul Tillich, I did not take a course with him, but I, you know, yeah. ran into him from time yeah. to time, knew who he was and heard him speak or preach mm -hmm. uh, from time to time. Um, my major professor was Frederick Grant, who um, uh, may not be quite so well known yeah. as the others, and, and um, 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 but was, was still a, mm -hmm. a, a very fine person, very fine scholar. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and John Knox, I've come to appreciate him more and more as time goes mm -hmm. on. He, he died, uh, oh, perhaps 10 years mm -hmm. ago now, and, I got to know him a little yeah, bit yeah. Uh, after, after, after having studied with him. But I appreciate his work more and more and, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and working with this, yeah. quite frankly, on a, on a, on a daily basis yeah. almost. But I don't think that was a mistake. I thought uh, yeah. Union was just a, I couldn't do better than that. Yeah. The easier thing would have been to stay at Duke. But I think so. To reach it. Mm -hmm. I think so. Different environment. For me, it would have yeah, been. Yeah. Uh, it would have been. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting here that you, to some extent, were almost marking time doing some church work and then got a call from Ward. To well, I guess I was. Um, may not have seemed that at the time. Well, uh, there was a bit of uncertainty I, uh, in, in, in my own vocation. I said I always wanted to teach, and I, I did, but I'm not sure I knew that yeah. uh, quite so clearly mm -hmm. at the time as I, as I did later. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole time I was uh, at Union, I really felt that I would end up in the Methodist ministry. Yeah. I was ordained, I still am. Yeah. 
Um, and and I, I've, I felt that was, you know, where I was headed. Yeah. Uh, but the more I got into that and the more I did it, the more I realized that there were other things out there that I thought uh, fully satisfied. That, uh, that would be more satisfying to me yeah. that, I, that I could do that maybe other people couldn't do and, mm. uh, and certainly a lot of people could do ministerial things a lot better than I could do, uh, I think. So uh, that, uh, I, I, I have not looked back on that decision. Yeah. I thought it was a good decision and uh, I don't regret it. Yeah. Coming to Texas with a little bit of shock after the Piedmont reached. Yeah, I, yeah, I think it was. I didn't know much about yeah. Texas at that time. Uh, I certainly didn't know how hot it could get in the summertime. Yeah. I, I didn't know that anything yeah. could, yeah. but um, there was that. Uh, uh, no, I, I really didn't know much about Texas when I came out here. I think I'd been through it one time uh, on, on a road trip with a friend, but that's, uh, that's the only time. Well, Joe, would you like to talk anything about your scholarly life over the years? Well, uh, yeah, I have um, I've worked mainly, uh, Jim, in New Testament studies, I said that, but more particularly in, in uh, the areas of two books in the New Testament, Luke and the Gospel of Luke and the Book of Acts, uh, mm -hmm. which we all think were written by, both those books were written by the same author, so we put them together yeah. as a general rule. Uh, I've done three books on, on Luke Acts. Um, one in which I studied the way the death of Jesus is treated throughout both Luke and Acts. Uh, one where I was very interested in the image of, images of Judaism uh, that you can find in reading those books. And the third one was a kind of a history of scholarship on, on, on Luke Acts. Uh, I guess uh, if there's another sub-theme that runs through what I've done, it's been Jewish-Christian relations. And uh, I have had uh, some interest, a good deal of interest in that as well. Uh, not only in scholarship, but in, in, in some of the community work that I've been doing is, has been along those lines as well. But uh, you can see the uh, book on the image of Judaism in, in Luke Acts, for example, I think was an attempt to see um, where kind of where the attitudes that Christians mm -hmm. have toward Jews mm -hmm. initially got shaped. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, you know I think we need to look back at these documents to see where the original shaping got done and what the issues were. Uh, what the polemic was, how the, uh, how, how these uh, books worked at it. My uh, book on the history of scholarship on Acts was really focused on looking at the issue of how scholarship mm -hmm. in the past has treated the issue of Luke and the Jews. So it was, it was how rather, long rather specific. How long did you have? For I went back to uh, about 1830. Mm -hmm. um, it was really critical scholarship, yeah, yeah. so we don't have much critical scholarship yeah. before that. So it started with Ferdinand Christian Bauer, German scholar of the 1830s, who I think is in many ways the father of all critical scholarship in New Testament studies. And then I tried to bring it on up to the present. Mm -hmm. The um, um, grim um, mm -hmm. result of that may be no surprise, but uh, at least it was worth it was worth looking at the yeah. scholarship to find out. But the grim result, I think, is that uh, if you think of the New Testament documents mm. as being in any sense yeah. anti-Jewish, mm. that anti-Jewishness was was highlighted, mm. emphasized, uh, exaggerated in a sense yeah. by the scholarship. And I mean, yeah. very top scholars. These are not. Mm fly-by-night people. These are our, our best scholars Major in the scholars, world. scholars, but uh, yeah, saw it I, in such a way. I think they did, I, and I think they tended to make that uh, kind of Christian anti-Judaism stronger. Yeah. Now, that's changed uh, very clearly since the Second World War. Uh, scholars have, have, have yeah. attempted to, um, to, to minimize that in, in rather I mean, different I was ways. reading a piece in the New York Review of Books, and Kind of setting Jesus back, and uh, yeah. the question of how Jewish it was—it was not 
how Jewish or how Roman it was, and uh -huh, this uh -huh. kind of issue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So I, I think that I think that's yeah, been a major yeah. change. And Could I get you to talk a little bit, Joe, about the students you get, the general perspective on students, whether there's been a shift over the years, or? Um, I think there have been changes over the years um, in the direction of, um, well, I'm not quite sure how to say this. We have always had some good students at SMU. Mm -hmm. I think when I first came, there were some very, very good mm -hmm. students. And, and the last year I taught, we had some very, very mm -hmm. good students. Maybe we had more toward the end. Mm -hmm. I think we did. At least we're now trying to go out and get them with their yeah, yeah. presidential scholars and, and things like uh, that. So. There always have, it seemed to me, Jim, that, that uh, uh, the great bulk of students represented kids who weren't terribly interested in being here um, in terms of the at academic least, at least life. being in the classroom. Right, in terms of being in the classroom. The library. Uh, they, they might like other parts of the, yeah. of the university, but not not uh, what I consider the heart of it. Yeah. Um, but despite that, and, and the real joy, I think, of teaching mm -hmm. is that uh, the, the, there have always been, every year, I think, there have always been some, mm -hmm. some really mm -hmm. excellent students who, uh, who do everything you ask, mm -hmm. more than you ask, who have perspectives on things that you, you learn from them. Yes. I learn from them as much as, maybe as mm -hmm. much as they learn from me. And, and um, yes, I think we do have more. I think they're more serious. Uh, I think they're more yeah, serious yeah. than they were when I first came. Yeah. Now, I don't mean that as a generalization, but I mean the yeah, best ones, yeah, the, yeah. the best uh, academically prepared students seem to be more serious mm -hmm. about their work. Than, uh, than even the best ones were in those you early days. Did you detect any difference in courses in biblical studies over the years? Uh, I, I'm not sure I have. Um, biblical studies is a difficult, uh, is difficult uh, for a number of perspective, from a number of perspectives and for a number of reasons, but I think probably uh, it's it's difficult because what we're teaching to students is for them pretty much counterintuitive uh, and, yeah. and, and and rather over they, they read it for one one from one perspective and, and you're trying to yeah it 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 challenges uh, a lot of what they've been brought up to believe and I think that's that's difficult to do and, and, you know, those of us who do it really don't like to go around no, and, and, and way, upset, yeah. you know, the yeah. apple cart in that way. But nevertheless, uh, we do feel that it's our job to present a critical approach yeah. to the Bible. Uh, yeah. If you're going to get any history out of it, if you're going to see it in any yeah. kind of uh, literary context or rhetorical context yeah. or whatever <laughs> might be yeah, the context yeah. in which you want to look at it, it's going to re mm -hmm. require raising certain questions. and. Throughout the whole time I was teaching, uh, there were students who resisted the hell out of yeah, this. Yeah. Um, uh, and this hasn't changed over the decades. I don't think it much. changed. It's pretty no, much. You know, it might. Uh, really sometimes there were more. Sometimes yeah, yeah, there were yeah. fewer. But uh, but I don't think that yeah. element has uh, shifted any. Has shifted very way. much. Yeah. No, it may he may even have grown uh, yeah. to some extent. With the growth of uh, evangelical and uh, evangelical yeah. um, groups, yeah. um, uh, it seems to me that they are uh, they're more likely to challenge uh, critical to what mm -hmm, and, and be resistant. Uh, I would say this, though, uh, it seems to me that um, many of the students who do resist uh, still do it uh, with a good deal of intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's yeah. not, you know, this is. My grandfather had yeah, this, yeah. and I'm, I'm going to have it too. Come hell or high water, mm -hmm. I won't do that. But uh, but rather they yeah. they're able to defend uh, a, a kind of a resistant view that I wouldn't uh, buy. But nevertheless, they can defend it very very adequately and and with uh, uh, and and yeah. quite intelligently on s some yeah. occasions. I'm I'm not sure I want to generalize that, yeah. but I've been yeah. impressed that there there have been students who've been able to do that. Yeah.
what's your general sense of uh, your present state of uh, emeritus faculty member and your connection with the university and with your own work? Um, I can use the library. Mm -hmm. um, I always feel welcome mm -hmm. in the yeah. library. Uh, I use Bridwell more than I do the Central University Library, um, but uh, that library, I would have to say, has always been supportive yeah. of, of what I wanted to do, and I can find almost everything I want uh, yeah. uh, easily there. Yeah. They let me keep out books forever, it yeah. seems, unless somebody really wants yeah. it badly. Uh, so the, that aspect of it is, 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 is very, very good. I still uh, use the uh, university email, uh, and that I, I'm very grateful for that, to, to be able to go get that. I can keep up with all my colleagues yeah. all over the world um, by using that, so it's, it's a superb uh, kind of effort. The only thing I really would think that would be good would be for the university to um, recognize the uh, uh, accomplishments of emeritus faculty a bit in a bit more formal way than they do. Uh, um, I, I know that there are publications where, well, uh, the university publications that list publications of, uh, uh, of various faculty members in all fields and uh, where they speak in other places and so forth, but not for emeritus. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that um, I've seen other places where the emeritus faculty treated along with yeah. everyone else, yeah. and, and I think that would be a, a good thing for us to yeah. do. Um, I, I believe everybody would be interested in, in, mm -hmm. in that. For one thing, it would be nice to, uh, as a younger faculty a member yeah. begins to look forward toward retirement, uh, to realize, you know, life, yeah. uh, intellectual start, life doesn't yeah, end uh, yeah. when you re when you retire mm -hmm. if you don't want it to, and uh, it, it mm -hmm. can continue. So there's maybe some examples of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yourself, uh, certainly you're you're one, and and many others that you and I you and I both know, who've carried on very active intellectual lives uh, post retirement for for many years. Mm -hmm. One hopes for mm -hmm. one hopes for many years. Mm -hmm. right. Put her away as long as you can. As long as possible. Fruitfully as possible. Yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah. Well, is there anything else, Joe, that you haven't we haven't touched on? Well, look, I made a few notes before we came to 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 remind myself of things that I thought were important to emphasize, and I think we've covered everything that I yeah. that I had in mind. Uh, yeah. As I say, uh, one tends to forget yeah. after so long a time. Well, I but, uh, think your remarkable service to the university and the department primarily, but elsewhere has uh, been very helpful to all of us. Well, thank you, Jim. <laughs>